Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you the best OBS settings for recording YouTube content. So I'm going to drag this window over here and this is OBS Studio running and it's screen capture software. If you've never heard of this software, I'll put some links in the YouTube description showing you how to get this software installed. I've got the current version, right? This is the latest version running and it's very stable and it's a good piece of screen capture software. Best of all, it's free. Free is always a good thing. So let's go to file and go to settings. And inside the settings, I'm gonna to go to output. And inside the output, I've got recording quality here. So you can set this to, same as stream, you can set it to, you wouldn't, you're not really streaming at the moment. So in this case, I'm not really streaming, but the recording format, normally I just leave it at high quality, medium file size, but you've got undistinguishable quality, large file size, and you've got lossless quality, tremendously large file size. So I would say stick with the high quality, medium file size. The quality of the videos that I upload to YouTube in terms of the picture quality seem to be perfectly fine. The recording format, you've got a couple of different options here, but I tend to just use MP4. That's quite a common format. YouTube seems to like that format. So why go through the effort of using a different uh, video format like you know these other ones here like FLV and so forth and then you just have to transcode that video content anyway. So MP4 is pretty good. Encoder. 100% if you've got hardware encoding option selected here, then select that option, hardware encoding. You don't really want to be encoding on software. You want to be encoding on the hardware on your machine, right? So hardware encoding is a good thing to have. If we go over to the video settings, inside the video settings, normally I select one or two options here in the frame rate. If I'm recording things that are fast motion, so if I'm doing something maybe in Blender, where there's a lot of movement, then 60 frames a second seems to be a sensible option. But if you're doing something like a tutorial or um, on say, let's say Excel spreadsheets where your mouse cursor and the content isn't moving very much, then you can get away with 30 frames a second. That should be fine. It shouldn't be an issue. YouTube supports both formats, 60 frames and 30 frames is not an issue. So depending on the type of content you're recording, will depend on really the frames per second. If you're not too bothered about this, then just leave it on the high setting. 60 frames a second is not gonna hurt you, right? The only difference is obviously 30 frames and 60 frames is double the amount. So 60 frames a second will be a larger video file size, but you're gonna have many more frames. So the movement of mouse cursors and so forth will be a lot smoother. If you're gonna record things like computer games on your computer, then 60 frames a second will probably be better anyway. So it depends on the type of content. Maybe try out a little test with 30 frames a second. If you think it's good enough, then that content should be in theory a smaller file size when you click the save button to stop the video. Uh, but if um, your recording is not so great, then try 60 frames and you should be good. So those are the settings I use and I have been using for the last three or four years using OBS, OS, uh, OBS Studio to record my content for YouTube. So you can see I've put over 500 videos up on YouTube, um, various content on various subject areas. It's all knowledge-based stuff, all to do with tutorials and all to do about learning. But I thought I'd share these settings with you because I use them every day and it's nice that you can see what settings I'm using and maybe you can use that uh, when you create some content as well. So let's go ahead and click cancel. We don't need to change anything here. This is a little OBS Studio running here. Awesome software. I definitely recommend you try and download this software and give it a test. So if you're using some other screen capture software that you're paying for, why not try out this free version? And if it works just as well, then you've got something for free, right? Won't hurt. Okay, let's minimize this. That's the end of this tutorial. If you've got any questions, feel free to write a comment in the YouTube or the Facebook uh, uh, commenting, and I'll try and reply to those and try and help you out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and also don't forget to check the description because I'm gonna put some other um, OBS tutorials in there, so you might find those interesting as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial. Mm -hmm.